Your music exclusive. I, I, I grew up like a savage. On ours, I have to look at it the same way where I found Stevie Wonder catalog, or right. I found Roy Ayers catalog, right. or something like that, or, or or Steely Dan or something like Steely that. Dan. Like we came across this, and it was years after it was popular, or it wasn't even popular. You know, like some of the stuff I'll play my mom, like this is from the '60s, and she'd be like, "We don't like, fuck, well, with, we that. fuck yeah, with that." Yeah, fucking white boys. You know what I'm saying? Or something <laughs> like, you know, yeah. like. I'll, but, yeah. but but then she'll listen to it too, like, "Oh, this is kind of cool." Mm -hmm. Or I'll play her stuff, and she. she you could play stuff from the 60s, 70s, all the past now, especially because music is all mixed up, and you don't know if it's new or old. Yeah. I mean, my mom just went to the Silk Sonic concert. And wow. I'm like, I, you know, in Vegas, like, and was like, this is one of the best concerts I've ever seen. And I'm like, first of all, how come you didn't take me? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And second of all, like, she like, I fucks with Silk Sonic. You know, like, right, because right. It's, it's, that's her era. Right. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. The 80s, big hair, all, you know, mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff. So it, it, you got to understand that whenever somebody heard you, that's when that's your first that's when you came out to them right mm -hmm. they can't have heard you in the past mm -hmm. you know they right. may have heard their family plan it or whatever but when, when they finally listen to you you brand new from that point point. and i think unfortunately the music industry pushes us to feel like we've gotten over the hill or past that but right. i think it's different in rap because Niggas ain't sex symbols, you know what I'm saying? No, I mean, LL the only dude that's been able to maintain his sex symbol status for so hell of centuries. Everybody yeah. else, it's like, we not rappers ain't really sex symbols. It's more about lyrics and game, and that shit lasts forever. You look at E40, you feel what I'm saying? Man. No, not a traditionally, you know, traditional sex symbol dude or what? No, I'm not gonna say it like that. Whatever. Yeah, but you know, Forty's like a handsome man. Hey, like, you know what I'm saying? No, but like, but like, no, like but, but like, saying, all dude, the American you know, stereotypes. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, I'm yeah, saying yeah. he's he's a big brother, mm -hmm. bald. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. No, from Vallejo, mm -hmm. his fit style is is mm -hmm. is. Big, but I'm saying like this man is going harder. Now. More people know about him now than ever. Very true. You know what I'm saying? Though, so when he was the hardest and in the streets and doing all this, when he was Mr. Flamboyant and and you know and, and Captain Sable and all that kind of stuff. This thing is a multi, same multi. Or look at Snoop Dogg, yeah. right? So when he was super crip, Snoop Dogg, Dog Pound Gangster, all that kind of stuff, and at the seemingly top of his game, like, look where he's at now. He got Man. reggae records, R&B records. Martha Stewart, and best Harvard, friend. You know, all that was <laughs> right. still a kill of her. Yeah, you know, still. Off the top. For sure. Off the top. So we got to understand that that traditional industry mold doesn't work on us. I, I really wish with r and I mean, you look at Charlie Wilson, mm -hmm. he's still doing it, but I really wish with r and I'm Isley's, Isley's kind of kept it going with, with R. Key, you know, he will not be named or whatever. Right, but I'm right, saying, right. I wish that r and artists would keep rolling too. They should've. Because it's frustrating to have to listen to only old classics or them trying to like jazz it up with some young rap style. Right. Like keep on making old R&B slaps. The old r &B. Because you look at Silk Sonic, they just making what a Curtis Mayfield and you know what I'm saying though all these dudes is making and imagine if Charlie Wilson or half these dudes that are still alive a lot of them are still alive were still just making slaps. those records yeah but but the industry they try to make you something else it, yeah and like you said the young man's game concept like that don't work with rap because yeah. you don't unless you smoke your brain away or you stop rapping you should be better than you are at 50 than you are at 20. For real. You got you know all kind of tricks. All it's, kind it's, of it's not it's yeah. not like hoop where your knees go out or your vision. I heard, go out I heard Jay Z say that he like my yeah. knees ain't gonna go bad. Yeah, like, so you know so what I'm so it's really like you should be better at fifty than you are at twenty. That's and that's, you look at a casual or a G rep like the dudes who are really monstrous with it. Jay Z, all them. I'm like they way more dangerous than the dude. Like they would wrap circles around their twenty year old selves, and that's mm -hmm. kind of what I'm striving to be. So I, I love to see young cats like J Cole. Showing me what I should have did with the beat, you know right, what I'm saying? No, because right. that's gonna be like, okay, that's how you feel. Right. Let me go. Right. Let me go back in the lab and and, and do something too. Like I, I I love that about rap. You can stay competitive. It's not, it, but you have to stay competitive. You have. You know to. what I'm saying? Like our whole thing is we want to be the best. Right. Not cool. Right. Not I want people to like me. Like nah, I want niggas to be like, oh, let's stop rapping when these yeah. niggas come in, or yeah. or let's get them on the mic right quick. Okay, let me go first though, because I don't want to. Go after bro. I want fools to feel like that when we show up, and and that's that's my motivation still that's, right now. Right? That's fire. Um, were you guys? Um, I think it was is that ninety three? Were you guys on that uh, Tribe Called Quest album cover? Yeah, yeah. Y'all was on there, yep. and what's what's great I think about that is Legendary Tribe, and then um, Rest in Peace Fife. Rest in peace. Who spent 
his last years in the town. Yeah, was, ironic. Yeah. You know, yeah. uh, but that was super big for me, right? Because the nod from them to the town with y'all and Short on that cover. Yeah, yeah. It was just like, damn. And I'm looking at all the MCs that's on here, like, damn, they really fuck with Oakland. They respect oh, Oakland. Man. Like, we and that photo shoot was like something like this, back to back to back. So wow. we went through and Grandmaster flashes. Yo, I love you. You know, wow. so Tribe really looked out for us. They put us on their first tour with the, our first tour with De La, mm -hmm. and they're you know we we're label mates, so mm -hmm. they brought us to the thing. It wasn't like the label forced it, and like to run into really the real legends that we grew up on, and they even knowing that we exist, right. let alone really messing with us tough like that. That's one of them. Like it's like when you meet. LeBron and you're a little kid and he yeah. does your basketball yeah. camp and then you end up in the league. Yeah. You feel yeah. what I'm saying though? Yeah. It was one of them kind of moments. You, you, you got to explain this to me though, right? Like just to just, just say, you said photo shoot, right? Before you even said that, this is how digital my mind is. <laughs> Hell no, man. My mind is super <laughs> digital. Like there's no fucking way that all of y'all was there taking those pictures. Yeah, it was a setup like this. Probably, wow. you know, and, and, and th cameras, they may have cut out all them heads physically. I, don't even, I mean, Photoshop wow. is just now you know, Adobe and all that was right, just now, just now starting to pop. Like, I remember all that. Like, we used to make show tapes where you have the song go back to back before we had our vinyls. Uh -huh. Well, we had to cut the tape and stick Man. it together so that it'll, you know what I'm saying? And then Man. record it onto another tape so that you could go into another song. So, like that. And, and even recording you, uh, well, that's a show tape, but even recording. So, by the time you guys were signing the job, was that real? Out? To real. No, it was but still there was real. Dats, to real. But, but that, was that was like super tape. Yeah, and, and you, you, a place might not have a DAP machine that you go do a show at. Mm -hmm. So it's reel to reel, and then you get your records pressed up on vinyl, or, or you only rocking your singles, because only the singles got the, uh, mm -hmm. the uh, instrumentals. Instrumental, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, though? that was big, too, because everybody wanted to rhyme over the instrumentals. Yeah, right. Um, yeah, but I had to say that about Tribe, because I just always thought that was just super monumental. I'm like, damn, like, Tribe Called Quest is one of the world-renowned rap groups, and they the success that they have, and they acknowledging these dudes from the town. I just Man. like, for me, it was like, wow. Man. And also, like, I wanted to ask you this, because you said this later, even for your letter, like getting into architecture, something you explained, like your style, even with architecture, is similar in style of the way y'all came up in hip hop. Like you said, if you look at our videos, it was a lot of nature. It was a lot of outside. Yeah. It was a lot of like embracing the elements. Like, where did that come from? We grew up on the hill, man. If we wanted to smoke weed, or yeah. like we grew up sliding down, you know, we went to sliding Howard. Down, yeah. So we slide yeah. the top 80 seconds. We used With to the cardboard slide with on the cardboard. cardboard. Yeah. You know what I'm saying, though? But when we wanted to get away, like we couldn't, same with like, we could go to Jim's Liquor. Maybe 7 Eleven, because Jim was closed. Yeah. But when you couldn't get down to East 14th, because the sideshow and all that kind of stuff was happening. You know what I'm saying, though? And it was hoes and all kind of yeah. stuff. Mm -hmm. So we had to go the other direction. Other way. So we spent a lot of our time, you know, my first 40, I drank next to Howard Elementary up on the hill. Wow. My first joint, all that kind of stuff is in that nature setting. Right. So we kind of associate chilling and getting away with that nature setting. You That's know, so crazy. like walking up to Sequoia, the church up yeah. there. We used to go up there and play volleyball. You know, like so y'all created going, all our smoke spots. I mean, we, <laughs> what's crazy is lightweight. We really did like it's trails where we could sit and be like, remember that snake popped out and you ran right there. Right, it's a trail now. Damn, it, it, you, like like it. You know, it, it's, it's you, funny because you know, we had names the, for all that. All the people that went to like Odell, Skyline, and all those places. That's that's what they say. Like y'all yeah. created a, a whole new vibe and era for that time. I I, I, I think so, man. But I think it was also just the times. Like, really strong weed was really popular. You know mm. what I'm saying, though? Uh, not Molly, but Ecstasy had just came out. You mm. know what I'm saying, though? It was uh, skateboarders and hip hoppers was really coming together, right? Mm -hmm. So the skateboarders would be like, man, fuck these mushrooms right mm -hmm. quick. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So we were on some, it wasn't the 60s, but since it was the 90s or early, late 80s, we had that 20 year thing where opening your mind, like we were, it was retro. Y'all was almost. early on skate culture. Yeah, yeah, I think the skaters gravitated, gravitated towards us because, towards all, yeah. because they liked the, the, the jazzy style of the beats, you know what I'm saying though? But then we also, would, I mean, skaters had good weed, we had the good weed, you know what I'm saying? We could go There's to so many fucking to. skater tapes to Souls of Mischief music. That, 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 like, they, they, they've they make the, so the many fucking tapes. Like if you go in a skate shop right now, there'll be a 19 year old in there listening to Soul. Oh yeah, it's, mm -hmm. it's crazy. That, that shit is that, wild, man. And then, like, you know, now with the reels and everything, yeah. people be sending me reels of pools doing amazing shit. Yeah. But like, it was that time and it made our high school experience cool because I really feel like 
we grew up in a really bad era of Oakland history as mm. far as murder, as far as all mm. these things. And, and, and an effort to get away from that and escape from that, we would smoke weed, go hang out in the, in the, in the hills and all this kind of stuff, you know, on foot too. Where like was you never knew, where was where was you never knew video shot at? You never knew was filmed in Hawaii. Mm. Yeah, I know. I was right? like, that ain't nah, around. Nah, that's nah, somewhere else. Nine was filmed in the east and then in, in, in Frisco at, on Ocean Beach, and then we went to Yosemite in a few places. But I really feel like we connect our chilling with some nature. Like even when we go record records, I mean, look, we're mm -hmm. working on tropical sounds right now. Mm -hmm. We building the world class studio Man, on I'm the a... beach in Panama, mm -hmm. and like the response that we've gotten. All, not just from rappers, R&B, all that kind of stuff. Everybody wants to go somewhere, clear their mind, because it's, it's too much stimulation in, it the, is. in this urban area that we're in. So, who, who, it, well, just to go along right on what, you, what you're saying is, Kanye, I love the way he records kind of like retreat style. Like, yeah, everything. Come here, we're going to dump all that shit mm -hmm. out, dump your mind out, let's yeah. make music. Like, yeah. I like that. But I, I was going to also ask you, who signed you guys that job? A Sophia Chang. Sophia Chang. So she also signed Fushnikins, I think. Fushnikins. And then, uh, she signed Casual too, and Dell was signed by uh, Dante Ross. Dante okay. Ross over. At yeah, Dale said Dante Ross. Yeah. Uh, so um, now, Twelves. When was the move to Oakland, and why? I moved to Oakland on August fourth, two thousand and five, oh, wow. and. Uh, it was one of those situations where I had uh, ran my course in a local DJ resident scene. So you didn't get de-virginized in Oakland. I'm just fucking with you. Nah, <laughs> I thought nah, an Oakland nah, girl nah. took your virgin. Nah, nah, nah. <laughs> um, basically, what what happened was it's just you know you ever get where your city is just too much going on. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Your cousin want to get you to go do this, go do that, or you somewhere. Street shit. All types of shit. Yeah, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. Just just black hood problems but you from there so you get involved in it in a different way mm -hmm. and when you from somewhere i feel like people don't want you to excel like that as much as strangers will embrace you so honestly all it was is this rap artists used to i remember one year we ended up getting like me and my boy used to uh throw parties at the union in chicago and one year we get like big gip and all them from goody mob to come through we did this party and we was able to do it. We got it by the flute, but we pulled off throwing the party, like 2,000 people that came or whatever. And so it branded me and my partner in the city as like we was the niggas, you know what I'm saying, throwing these parties, but we were doing that at a young age. And basically what happened was this, rap artists would come up to me in the, in, the, in the club and just assume that I know how to record and produce. I didn't know shit about none of that shit, right? But it was just assumptions. So it was literally when people come up to me, I need to get in this studio, I need to do this and that. So I bought a digital recorder and all that, right? And bought like equipment, basic equipment where I could record them. And I, man, I probably fucked up 40 or 50 different artists and shit during that time trying to figure it out or play like I actually knew what I was doing. And it just got to a point where I was like, I want to go to school for this shit. And back then, Full sale was the big thing. Like, we had a Columbia in Chicago, but I don't want to be there no more. You know what I'm saying? So everybody's like, oh, you got to go to full sale. You know, everybody wanted to go to full sale. I went down there and looked at it. I drove myself down there, Orlando, right? Shit. All the way down there from Chicago just to go peep it. And when I got there, it was like, this shit ain't for me, bro. And, like, the other kids that were there at the school and shit, they were like, there's a lot of politics. Like, if your family in the industry, they'll find you a job or something, but you about to pay, like, 80 grand a year to go to school here. And wow. you might not even get placed in the industry working and being an engineer. So I came back to Chicago. I was sitting at my pop's crib, and I found two schools. One was up in upstate New York, low recording costs. And then I, my, I, I stumbled along... Uh, uh, along this place called Los Madonna's College out in Pittsburgh. And I was reading up on it, and there was this professor that was running the recording project. He might be still there, named Frank Doherty, right? And, um, and Rick Shiner, which I still love them to death. But basically, I hit them. I called them. And when I called them, they answered the phone, right? And I'm talking to Frank. He's like, yeah, I got some Grammys. I got a Grammy with Art Blake and Jazz. I got a Grammy with uh, Ray Charles. Come on down. I really want to teach you. Right, and their energy, these are older white men, you know what I'm saying? But they had already won Grammys and shit like that. So like, something just felt like it was gonna be right. I still flipped the coin on it, and even the coin confirmed it and landed on West Coast. 
I literally packed up my shit. Five hundred dollars a dream. I I I uh, pressed up a double CD mixtape. And then basically everybody at the club that I was rocking bought the mixtape to help me get more money while I could get my flight out here and all the shit. Mm -hmm. And basically I just did underground shit like that. I showed a bunch of mixtapes. I still got a tape from that, right? And uh, I pulled it all together. I moved to Pittsburgh, California. Mm -hmm. I was staying at the Motel 6 on Leland. You feel Damn. me? Like staying there, Leland. living there, right? Shit. Like living there on Leland, right? <laughs> Going to school at Los Madanos, mm -hmm. trying to get my shit together. I was here for maybe a week or two, and my you boy- You had financial aid? I, I had financial Fast aid. Fast food gets you through it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, had, I remember my boy, I used to work at the Boys and Girls Club doing DJ shit in Chicago. My boy hit me up. He's like, I got a friend down there. They're doing some type of school. And this is the craziest shit ever, right? I get recruited to teach a DJ class and a production class. I'm in college at Los Madonna's, but the school is- East Oakland Community High School that took over King Estates on 82nd wow. on top of the hill right next to Howard. So wow. those back trails in them woods that they're trying to lead to Howard right wow. there at King Estates, wow. I wow. taught there at That's that school. Wow. That was my first year of being in Oakland. I was going up on Keller on 82nd, hey. and I'm getting taught. Like, like I had mentors, big shout out K. Wayne Yang, and which hella funny is my boy, um, I gotta, gotta remember his name. I don't want to botch it. It's like, it's, what was his name? It's C, it starts with an E or something. First time I met Tajay, I'm at my mentor's house on High Street right off of Fruitvale. And we had a cold friend uh, like Ibrahim, I think was his name or something like that. E. What was it? Ibrahim, e. I think it was. E, e, e yeah. yeah. E, right? E, e was it? Ibrahim had bought Tajay through with a couple other folks. This is right when I get here, like 05 or something, right? And I remember the first time I met him, I didn't even know it was him, right? We were sitting in the backyard, and, and we ended up talking about music. And he was like, yeah, man, I'm still getting money from it. You know, party people, we're still going out to party because we're talking about, like, the music industry and all that shit. But this is, like, 05. And so it was crazy to think about, like, how shit comes full circle. Like, if you just go do some shit. Like, if I would end up in New York, I would have never been out here. I would have never. Every decision makes you know, every choice you make align the stars to everything. So it's like that coin would have flipped. I could have been in upstate New York. I would have never even been out here. So the grace of God, that's basically what happened. 05, I moved out there. They shut down our school like maybe two or three hours. We the school that like marched all the way down the school district. The news covered it, tried to save our school and all that shit. They still shut our shit down. You know what I mean? Oakland school closures and all of that. So then I started running programs. I ended up working over at uh, Youth Uprising those whole community of people, doing education over there, doing a DJ class there, moved around, worked for Oakland Leaf Foundation. What year was the Youth Uprising? I think I started there in like 06 or 07, like right at the beginning of it. So is, is <clears throat> Unknown out. was all there, Big Mike, uh, 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 One Time, Daniel, uh, all one of time. those people were in there, you so, know what I'm saying? So, I mean, is, is, mm. is all the guys coming through there at the time? Though, Casual was working there. No, no, I yeah. mean the young rappers, because you know, that was our hub. Oh, D-Lo was up there, yeah. or swimming through there. That's where I got really, really close to a League 510 was up there and they're working. Huh? Was Kamaya, Kamaya was up time. there working with CT. She was Rico the was at there that uh, up at that time. Everybody yeah, was there. Uh, Beat Rock was up Beat there Rock. when I was up there. And it was like. Los a, Rockers? Los Rockers would come through lightweight too. They were a part of more You Speaks and stuff like that. And I met them right away. So, yeah. like, soon when they were, when it was, when Rick, when Dune was still Panama, Panama back then, right? Panama, he was still yeah. in the Black Lion crew, right? Yeah. Right? That was like the, the whole stars, thing. Chap. Rap stars, we used to always uh, play at 2232 MLK. Yeah. It wasn't Starline, yeah. it was 2232 MLK, yeah. right? And uh, Andrew and, and other cat owned it. And, um, that was like my introduction years to Oakland and to the town. Mm -hmm. And when I got here, that was like the first people I met. So I met Fab right away, because Youth Uprising. Mm -hmm. So I met him and, and that whole crew of people, like maybe like a year after I that got here. That was the Miss Alice era. Alice, when Alice was still Alice. up there. Mm -hmm. Alice was still up there. Mm -hmm. And that was some that was the, interesting That times. was a hell of a time, man. And, I, and that was some basically interesting Basically was times. the recruitment ground for end up being what you which y'all evolved Fairland, to doing Fairland, business yeah. with PTB and PTB. I put out League Five One Zero. Yeah, League yeah. He put out the League Cal um, and mine who and else was TK. Over there? Yep. Yeah, uh, AFNF was over there for mm -hmm. a while, and uh, mm -hmm. all the beta. So beta, uh, who else came through there? 
Uh, BD used to be a youth uprising? Uh, um, BD wouldn't really be up there. That's where I really got close to Rico before Rico went down and went Rico. to jail. Yeah. So Rico the Kid was up there nonstop, and he was like my brother. Like, you know what I mean? We still hella close to this day because our relationship at Youth Uprising before he went down. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. And once he got out, I'm like one of the first people he hit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So we still going strong to this day. So when you, when you go from the center to, to the high road building, right, a lot of them kids came over there. Uh, so you had, uh, I mean, and even the ones that wasn't at the center, the, even the ones that wasn't there, like, you, well, Shady Nate was there. Shady. You had Filthy there, Eddie P, D-Lo. Mm -hmm. And so y'all did a lot of albums, like, with the town business with Stretch, right? Yeah, I mean, before that, though, it was just, uh, I mean, my first entree to that, is, it was Beta, man. It, it was, was Beta. Really, we ain't listening. <clears throat> I was mm. burning one with this chick. And she was playing, we ain't listening. And I was like, ooh, this is dangerous right here. Huh. Who is this? You yeah. know what I'm saying, though? Yeah. And she was like, you ain't heard of being a leader? And I was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I was crazy, you know what I'm saying? So <laughs> then she linked me up, and then J Mo came through, and then me and J Mo just started rocking. That was more J Mo just bringing everybody through bringing and, everybody and, and then dealing with dude. Stretch and uh, dealing with uh, uh, Town Thisness and all that kind of stuff. Ooh. So, yeah, shout out to J Mo, man. He's still doing it. He got a good studio set up. Uh, the facility out in, out in Vegas. And so he's still building young talent, man. That's dope. I, shout up, like, it's all types of niggas out here. You feel what I'm saying, mm -hmm. though? And you could be whatever you want. But J-Mo is a street dude who has made a conscious effort to use his street credibility to corral young people to do something positive with that's what they do. And that's the gangsterest shit you could ever that's possibly most think. Definitely. That's a hard position to stand on. You know what I'm saying? The play, yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. it, 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 plug up media, all that. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying, though? It, it's, it's very difficult, I think, because he's doing it cold turkey, too. Mm -hmm. So it's very difficult to sit and say, you know what? I got all this clout from doing all the wrong things, mm -hmm. and I'm going to take it, and, and I'm going to damn near Debo niggas into doing mm -hmm. the right thing. Right, and, right. And, but I'm saying really be ready to go to war with these right. little niggas because, you know, little niggas, they ain't, they, they ain't, they ain't listening. listening. Right. You know what I'm saying, right. though? And right. we got the, everybody got the equalizers. So, <clears throat> so for him to put literally his life on the line, so that he could save other people's lives. Like Super that's dope. like some Super next dope. level, you know what I'm saying though? And so shout out J-Mo, because he, really, he really is a person that tapped me into all that kind of stuff, you know? And, and I mean, it's been cool and successful. And I mean, you look at where Beta is now, and I mean, he got a project right now that I'm talking about could be- Shout like, out to Mechanics, biggest, man, yeah. working with Beta, man. Shh, mechanics, that, that Mechanics record is correct, but I'm talking about he got a project with Breakbeat Lou right now that I heard that I'm like, oh, this needs to be out for real, for like real. he can, he can really bubble on a national. Yeah, Beta level. always been a hell of a fucking rapper. Yeah, Sh Shady too, man. Like Shady, Shady too. Like I think Shady was crazy. Him, they remind me of like Nas and Az. You feel what I'm saying though? Nas and Az. You know what I'm saying? That's a great comparison. Uh, man. Uh, of, the, of the town, you know. That's a great comparison. But, but I, I like think that. They, they need to get that real look yeah. national because they can compete on a national level. Mm -hmm. I really hate mm -hmm. how we get put into this sort of. When I say ghetto, I ain't talking about the streets. I'm talking about like a, a enclosed area mm -hmm. because we're from a place that's known for pimping or mm -hmm. known for, mm -hmm. you know, now bipping or whatever, you know, all this shit. And they try to overlook the lyricism. Right. You know what I'm saying, they, though? And, they really and these do. Dudes, like, I'm not signing weak niggas. Like, I, that's uh -huh. my only criteria. Like, you can't be weak. You don't come from that era. You can't, you, your yeah, ears can't I? hear like, a weak and, nigga. And I'm like, wow. I, I can make money other ways. Why right. do I need to make money exactly. doing that way? Yeah. Exactly. You know what I'm saying, though? I, I, could, I, I, I could not do that. And 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 be a it'd be a passion project and still make money from other stuff, let alone from my own rap career. But why I'm assigned people that I wouldn't rap with, or or that I wouldn't put out music I wouldn't listen to. Stay on blue. Stay on blue. I'm just trying to stay racked up like you. Put an eight in a one and do magic. Trying to stretch hair run like elastic. Eco friendly drug dealer. I don't waste no plastic. Use all four corners of that baggie. Uh, all I ever wanted was a bankroll So I pull up on champ before the bank close Say no to stank hoes and stank clothes No paramedic pimping, nigga, we don't save hoes Yeah, rest in peace to Lil' M, my love